own history. So um, I like to I like to introduce audiences that are not familiar with old songs to the old <laughs> songs. So, but I won't do an entire program of long ballads unless I'm in front of an audience that appreciate that knows that music and appreciates it. But great question, great question. Is there anything unique about this collaboration compared to other collaborations that you've been, uh, that you've had previously? Unique. Unique. But there's no one like Dan. And there's no one like John. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that. <laughs> Mark, do you have a question? Okay, not to worry, no problem. Thank you for the extra question. I need to alert those, those people that you haven't had answers recorded, so you're going to have to <coughs> jump them down quickly or remember them. Mm. Very quickly, Jim. Got a bit of a, a, a different question. Uh, okay. I don't suppose that you two could play the, the, the oh, from the film Deliverance, is it? The Julian I don't play that style of banjo. Oh. At all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not that good of a guitar player. Just wondering. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I, I, I used to be in a band. I used to be in a band called Tart and Feather many Tart and Feathered many, many years ago. And we actually used to do um, the deliverance that song with a concertina and an accordion. <laughs> and we called it dueling bozos. <laughs> because that's what it was. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll ask slightly under an hour now because so out the question is really an excerpt from what you would see if you saw John and Deborah in concert but as I said they tailor it to the audience so I don't know what to expect but then neither do they <laughs> uh, so I'm going to sit at the back and enjoy it I hope you'll do the same so John Roberts Deborah Cowan for your pleasure for do some run out I'll give you a, a okay one when we've got a song all right yeah here's a drinking song and if you feel, it's a very patriotic English drinking song that comes from Cornwall, and if you feel like joining in, there's a chorus, and you'll see it as it comes back. Mm, pants the good old bumper round and never count the score. Drink the good old liquor down and boldly ask for more. For tis he who will not merry, merry be. Shall never taste of joy. See, see, the cakes in view, and forward, my brave boys. Here's a health unto Her Majesty, and long may she reign. Queen of all the seven seas, and the pride of the Spanish main. For tis he who will not marry, marry be, shall never taste of joy. See, see, the cape's in view, and forward, my brave boys. But one thing more I'll ask of you before we count the score. Give to me the girl I love and the key to the cellar door. For tis he who will not marry, marry be, shall never taste of joy. See, see, the cape's in view and forward, my brave boys. It is patriotic. Once more unto Her Majesty, then let the toast go round. Confusion to her enemies, wherever they are found. For tis he who will not marry, marry be, shall never taste of joy. 
see, see the capes in view and forward, my brave boys. <laughs> So we'll continue on this theme of drink, <laughs> which seems to be the national pastime. We have our little themes, and drink appears a lot in English folk song. Not to mention... Not to mention... Which, well, would you class this as English folk song? I would, okay. because it, it comes from... Uh, it comes from... England. Okay. Yes. Specifically... Uh, from a band who uh, made their home in uh, the London area, of, a London area called Muswell, where another infamous band made their home. And uh, uh, this is a song I first heard when I was about 18 years old, and I just, I loved it. I thought it was great. Came off of a record album by the Kinks called Muswell Hillbillies. That was the name of the record album. The song's called Alcohol. And I've, I've been singing it for many, many years. And when Fond Desire Farewell, when, we were, when Dave and I were doing the pre-production for Fond Desire Farewell, um, we, were, we had all the material set. We had 11 songs. And Dave said, you know, we really do need a 12th song. Let's, let's make this an even, an even dozen. So I said, well, are you familiar with the Kinks song Alcohol? And he was not, which I was amazed at, because he knows, he knows a lot of things. And uh, I sang it for him, and then I sent him an MP3 of the Kinks doing it, and he came up with a brilliant arrangement, which you can hear online. Um, I've I've got it. It's on it's on uh, the Bandcamp web website. You can find it there. And uh, the arrangement consisted of a clarinet doing some very interesting modal musical things, and instead of a bass, we used a tuba <coughs> for the bass. And then Dave's playing a toy piano, one of those little little kids' piano. He plays one of those. And uh, our recording engineer's uh, seven-year-old son was learning to play the drums and had a little kid's drum set. So Dave is playing the little kid's drum set on the, on the track. But we couldn't fit the band into the luggage, so uh, you just get me. Alcohol by Ray Davies. Here's the story of a sinner He used to be a winner Enjoying a life of prominence and position But the pressures at the office His socialite engagements His selfish wife's fanatical ambition It turned him to the booze And he got mixed up with a floozy She led him to a life of indecision The floozy made him spend his dough She left him lying on skid row A drunken lag in some salvation army mission It's such a shame Oh, demon alcohol Memories I cannot recall Who thought I would say Damn it all and blow it all Barley wine, pink gin, he'll drink anything. Port, perno or tequila. Rum, scotch, vodka on the rocks. As long as all his troubles disappear. But he messed up his life when he beat up his wife. Now the floozy has gone and found another sucker. She's gonna turn him on to drink. She's gonna lead him to the brink. And when his money's gone, she'll leave him in the gutter. It's such a shame Oh, demon alcohol Memories I cannot recall Who thought I would say Damn it all and blow it all away I would fall 
a slave to demon alcohol. Who thought I would fall a slave to demon alcohol? One of the places that English traditional folk song came out of, and, and the sort of the way that it's <coughs> sung now, it came out of the music halls which started in the uh, mid 1850s and uh, people would uh, get in a pub basically, uh, maybe a, a room in a pub, later they built, as it got really popular, they built theatres on the back of pubs and, and touring performers would come around in their hackney carriages and do their three song set and then they'd go off to another music hall and uh, they'd be filled in. All the major cities used to have their music hall and their, and their roster of music, local music hall artists. But all these songs had verses which are entirely forgettable. The verse was simply a way to get around to the chorus, which was what everybody sang, and that's, the, that's what you'd hear people singing on the streets. Uh, this of course was the days before potted music, but it's the, the tradition of joining in the chorus like that that uh, I think is, is still, you still find in, uh, in the folk songs. So this is one of the easiest choruses I know. It's the last time I'll try and uh, drill a chorus on it. It's a drinking song, the chorus goes. It's not a musical song, but it's of that tradition. The chorus goes, so be easy and free when you're drinking with me. Be flat. I'm a man you don't meet every day. That's it. So be easy and free when you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every day. If some of you move your lips during the chorus, that would make me feel better. <laughs> now me name is Jock Stewart. I'm a canning going man. I'm a roving young fellow I've been. So be easy and free when you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every day. I have acres of land and men at command. I've always a shilling to spare. So be easy and free when you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every day. And I took out my gun. With my dumb I did shoot All down by the river Kilmer So be easy and free When you're drinking with me I'm a man you don't meet every day Fill on your glasses with the brandy and wine. Whatever the cost, I will pay. So be easy and free when you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every day. Yes, my name is John Steele. I'm a caddy going man and a roving young fellow I be. So be easy and free when you're drinking with me. I'm a man you don't meet every
as as uh, we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, I am uh, I am with a union, and I'm with uh, Local 1000, and uh, union unionism unionism I guess is is part of my DNA. Uh, my great great grandfather emigrated to America in 1910, and uh, from Western Russia. Um, and was instrumental in uh, starting one of the uh, first all Jewish trade metal trade uh, trade workers union in the United States in Woodbine, New Jersey. And I've been raised uh, to be I've been raised to be a good union woman. Uh, my uh, my uh, mother's parents were both uh, union members. My grandfather, my mother's father, was. Uh, a, a union steward uh, with the Southern Pacific Railroad, and uh, I've always been uh, just part of that part of that political uh, philosophy. So uh, this is a song that uh, one of my sisters from Local 1000 wrote, and it's based on a true story. How many of you have jobs outside of school? How many of you have jobs outside? Any of you work at uh, McDonald's? <laughs> and don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. We've all been there. We've all been there. Any of you work at KFC? Burger King. And then my favorite is the little chef. <laughs> I do like it. <coughs> well, this is a story. This is a song about an actual incident that took place in northeastern Ohio in 1998, where uh, six workers at McDonald's <coughs> in Mendocino, Ohio, decided that they were going to uh, stand up to the bosses at their McDonald's and uh, fight for dignity. This is called the Great Fast Food Strike. <coughs> now, do you remember how it starts? Come all you fellow workers, wherever you may dwell. If you'll consent to listen, a story I will tell. Six young workers like yourselves who were compelled to go and labor for McDonald's in Macedonia. So that's the bit you can sing. Macedonia. Twas in Northeast Ohio this burger franchise stood. Like many such establishments, conditions were not good. Wages, they were meager, but by far the greatest woe was to work for Jerry Guffey in Macedonia. <coughs> Jerry was the manager, a spiteful man was he. If ever you displeased him, his anger you would see. Foul names, shouts, and curses, his rage would overflow. He was the meanest fast food boss in Macedonia. Margaret, she was 66, she worked from need not choice. One day she left a bag of trash out of its proper place. Jerry came upon it, his rage did overflow. The staff looked on while Margaret wept in Macedonia. Twas on an Easter Sunday, student workers made a vow. Abuse of youth and elderly no longer they'd allow. These six young workers left their jobs, their paychecks did forego to walk upon the picket line in Macedonia. Brian Drafts walked out, Jamal Nickens he did too. Josh Jones and Matt Kassirli, they joined that picket crew. Steve Stearns and Hardy, Heidi Schaefer, solidarity did show. They led the fight for dignity in Macedonia. From CNN to Howard Stern, Fox News to NPR. The story of this fast food strike, it traveled near and far. McDonald's high executives to stay, save the status quo. Called in a crack consultant, 
to Macedonia. Then Teamsters Local 802. The Teamsters Union is a national trade union that encompasses all kinds of different occupations in the United States. Then Teamsters Local 802 came to the strikers' aid. These kids <coughs> against your corporate might, an unfair fight, they said. We're here to balance out the scales, the company said no. We will not talk with unions here in, in Macedonia. Macedonia. At Route 8 and the interstate, these workers held their ground. They held aloft their picket signs as April rains beat down. Till a Teamster bakery driver, he dealt the final blow. He would not cross the picket line in Macedonia. The bosses watched in horror as the truck it pulled away. They knew it carried all the buns they'd needed for that day. While twenty cheering workers all marching to and fro saw victory within their grasp in Macedonia. At every point of bargaining, these workers had their will. Fair wages, paid vacations, better safety at the grill. And to a training program, Jerry Guffey's forced to go to brush up on his people skills in, in Macedonia. <coughs> You've heard of labor struggles in Harlan's bloody hills in West Virginia coal mines and in Massachusetts mills. But April 1998, the history books will show how student workers led the fight in Macedonia. The great fast food struggle. <laughs> Well, this next song I think qualifies as a ballad, although it's not traditional. It was written by a Scottish school teacher named Adam McNaughton on a bet. Um, one of the one of the things about learning so learning songs, um, I love songs that have lots and lots and lots of words. It takes me forever to learn them. That's that's where a lot of the time goes, and. Uh, I sit in the car listening to tapes and reading, reading my notebook while I'm driving down the interstate at 75 miles an hour. What's Which is why I <laughs> drive to the gigs. <laughs> What's the next verse? But this is, uh, this is a story that's set into song, and I think you might know the plot. I hope you know the plot. There was this king sitting in his garden all alone When his brother in his ear poured a little bit of henbane Stole his brother's crown and his money and his widow But the dead king walked and got his son and said Hey listen kiddo, I've been killed and it's your duty To take revenge on Claudius Kill him quick and clean and tell the nation what a fraud he is The kid said right, I'll do it but I'll have to do the crafty If no one will suspect me I'll kid on that I'm a dafty so with all except Horatio, and he counts him as a friend, Hamlet, that's the kid, he kids on his round the bend, and because he isn't ready for obligatory killing, he tries to make the th king think that he's tons off the shilling, takes a rise out of Polonius, treats poor Ophelia vile, tells Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, Denmark's a bloody jail, then a group of travelling actors like 784 arrive to do a special one night gig in Elsie. Hamlet, Hamlet loves his mommy. Hamlet, Hamlet acting balmy. Hamlet, Hamlet hesitating, wonders if the ghosts are cheat, and that is why he's waiting. 
So Hamlet wrote a scene for the players to enact So Horatio and he could watch and see if Claudius cracked Well the play was called The Mouse Trap Not the one that's running now And sure enough the king walked out before the play was through Now Hamlet's got the proof his uncle gave his dad the dose The only problem being now that Claudius knows he knows So while Hamlet tells his mother a new husband's not a fit one Uncle Claude puts out a contract with the English king as hitman and when Hamlet killed Polonius the consul corpus delecti was the king's excuse to send him for an English hempen necktie with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to make quite sure he got there but Hamlet jumped the boat and put the finger straight on that pair when Laertes heard his dad had been stabbed in the arras he came running back to Elsinore too sweet hot foot from Paris and Ophelia with her dad killed by the man she was to marry after saying it with flowers she committed Harry Carey Hamlet Hamlet no messing Hamlet Hamlet learned his lesson Hamlet Hamlet your ex crust convinced him that men good or bad at last must come to dance then Laertes lost his place and was demanding retribution. The king said, keep your head and I'll provide you a solution. So he arranged a sword fight for the interested parties with a blunted sword for Hamlet and a sharp one for Laertes. To make double sure the old belt and braces line, he fixed a poison sword tip and a poison cup of wine. While the poison sword got Hamlet, but Laertes went and muffed it cause he got stabbed himself. And he confessed before he snuffed it. Then Hamlet's mummy drank the wine, and as her face was turning blue, Hamlet said, <coughs> I believe the king's a baddie through and through. Incestuous, murderous, damned <coughs> Dane, he said to be precise, and made up for hesitating once by killing Claudius twice, because he stabbed him with a knife, then forced the wine between his lips. He said, the rest is silence. That was Hamlet at his chips. They fired a volley over him that shook the topmost rafter and fought in brass knee deep in Danes. Lived happy ever after. Hamlet, Hamlet, ain't it gory? Hamlet, Hamlet, end of story. Hamlet, Hamlet, I'm on my way. If you thought that was confusing, read the bloody play. <laughs> I was looking at the bulletin board out in the hallway and uh, saw that um, it was a Pink Floyd song I wasn't familiar with, which was kind of interesting. But it was penned here at Leeds City College. Very cool. So here we go. Walk on part in the war 
or a lead role in a cage. Recruiting song. Oh, there we go. We, we, we're on a slightly military thing. Yes. It's a Scottish recruiting song. And they're not very successful, which is alright. <laughs> With the songs of the recruiting? With the recruiting. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, before I do that, I'll do a very short little uh, Irish recruiting. There's a, a couple of uh, Irish songs about. Uh, about meeting the recruiting sergeant because a lot of Irishmen did join the British, Ar the British Army at various points in history. Oh, 
as I was walking down the street, I was feeling light and lucky. Oh, when a recruiting sergeant said to me, Faith, you look fine in khaki, oh. For the king, he is in need of men. Come read this proclamation, oh. And it's life in Flanders for you, then twould be a lovely vacation, oh. Oh, says I to the sergeant, then says I, come tell me, sergeant, dear me, oh, if I had a pack stuck on me back, would I look bright and cheery, oh, for you'd make me drill and march until you had me like the Frenchies, oh, it may be warm in Flanders, but it's drafty in the trenches, oh. Then the sergeant raised his little cane, and his smile was most provoking, oh. And he twirled and twiddled his wee moustache, says he, surely a joke, you know. For the sandbags, they are lovely and high. The wind you'd never feel blowing, no. Oh. But I winked at a colleen passing by, says I, what if it's snowing, no. Oh. I come wind, come rain, come hail, come snow, we're not going out to Flanders, oh, there's fighting in Dublin to be done, let your captains and commanders go, and let Englishmen for England fight, and it's time that they got started, oh, and I wish that sergeant a very good night, and there and then we parted, oh. Two recruiting sergeants came from the Black Wash Through markets and fairs some recruits fought to catch And on the they enlisted was thirty and three Enlist one e laddie and come away with me But it's over the mountains and over the main The round Gibraltar to France and Spain Put a feather to your bonnet and a kilt above your knee. Enlist, waddy laddie, and come away with me. For it's out by the barn and in by the barn. This old farmer thinks you'll never tire. It's a slavery job of low degree. Enlist, bonny laddie, and come away with me. Ah, laddie, you don't know the danger that you're in. If your horses was to flag and your sheep was to run, this wicked old farmer, he wouldn't pay your fee. Enlist, bonny laddie, and come away with me. Mountains and over the main, the round Gibraltar to France and Spain. Put a feather to your bonnet and a kilt above your knee. Enlist, body laddie, and come away with me. Ah, laddie, if you've gone to sweetheart and bear. You'll easily get rid of that ill-spun yarn I rattle on the drum and that'll pay it all Enlist, body laddie, and heed the bugle call It's over the mountains and over the main The red Gibraltar to France and Spain Put a feather to your bonnet and a kilt above your knee Enlist, body laddie, and come away with me. Let's do ruins. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is another song that was on uh, my last record called Ruins by the Shore and was written by a man named Nick Jones who uh, 
was quite uh, an iconic figure in the 60s and 70s uh, as, a, as a singer and a guitar player. And in 1982, um, was uh, his performing career was cut short uh, because of a very serious car accident that left him pretty disabled for the rest of his life. He's still around, he lives in Devon, and uh, he's even put, picked up the guitar again and playing a little music, singing some songs, and uh, there's been lots of tribute concerts and tributes to him in the last few years. Uh, he's quite influential and influenced many, many people. Um, you among them? Yeah, me among them. This is called Ruins by the Shore, and uh, how many of you have seen the movie Planet of the Apes? Have you ever seen the movie Planet of the Apes? Well, he wrote this song after he had seen this film, um, and especially that last scene, which I will not spoil it for you. You'll have to watch the film. But uh, after seeing the movie, he said he told me, he started thinking about how civilizations, how things cycle around, and at some point we're going to have all of these advances and all these tech, all this technology, as we do now, but eventually we're going to cycle back to where we came from. So this is Ruins by the Shore. And their faces are no more As we walk among the ruins by the shore They worship gods and thought they never die But now the spiders nest the tombs wherein they lie and all their bones are black men, and their faces are no more, as we walk among the ruins by the But all our bones will blacken, our faces be no more, as we lie among the ruins by the shore. And all our bones will blacken, our faces be no more, as we lie among the ruins. As we lie among the ruins by the shore. 
one more. Oh. Um, you know which ones I like to sing. What do you like to sing? I like to sing Sir Patrick Spence or Sea Fever. Oh, you want to do a, a ballad to finish? Yeah, let's do a ballad. What do you want to do, Sea Fever? Let's do Sir Patrick Spence. Sir Patrick Spence. <laughs> this is one of the older <laughs> Scottish ballads. And was actually put into this form by Nick Jones. By Nick Jones. Great segue. <laughs> yeah, great segue. Great segue. I learned it years ago to, to teach to a lot like you. Um, it, well, it was an English literature class uh, at an American college and he was doing a segment on, teacher was doing a segment on ballads and uh, he's a friend of mine, he asked me if I'd sing uh, a, a class period's worth of ballads just to demonstrate that these were sung and I learned this and I just went in and I sang it with no accompaniment whatsoever and then I thought many years later I said I wonder if a concertina would fit to that. So, uh, turns out, I think it did, and this is the way it's come out. Uh, it's a short, it's an anglicized and a shorter version than the long Scots ballad, but, uh, and Deb gives me a nice harmony, so <laughs> we'll end with this one. What's the what key of that? It's in Dunfermline town, a drink in the blood red wine. Oh, where can I get me a good mariner to sail seven ships of mine? Up oh, then spoke an old old man, a sitting at the king's right knee. He says Sir Patrick Spence is the best mariner that's ever sailed on the sea. And the king, he's written a broad letter and signed it with his hand. And he sent it to Sir Patrick Spence, a walking on the strand. And the very first line that Patrick he read, a little laugh and then gave he. On the very next line that Patrick he read, the salt is blinded his eye. Oh, who is it has done this deed and told the king on me? But never was I a good mariner, and never do intend to be. Late yesterday, I saw the new moon, the old moon in her eyes. And I fear, I fear a deadly storm, our little ship will come to harm. But rise up, rise up, me merry men all, a little ship she sails with the dawn. Whether it's a windy day, or whether it's a wet, or whether it's a deadly storm. And they had not sailed a league, a league, a league, but barely nine. When the wind and the wet and the sleet and snow come a blowing up from behind. Get me a little cabin boy to take the helm in hand While I ride up to the top of the mast And see if I can't spy that Come down, come down, Sir Patrick's friends We fear that we all will die For in and out of the good ship's hull The wind and the water fly the very first step the Patrick he took, the water came up to his knee. And the very next step the Patrick he took, drowned they were in the sea. And many was the fine feather bed a-floating on the foam. And many was the little Lord son that never, never more came home. Walking on the strand, expecting isles 
from Aberdeen shore It's fifty fathoms deep And it's where you'll find Sir Patrick Spence The little lord's at his feet <laughs> we, we kind of ended with something topical because that's a song inspired by <coughs> some people protesting against their allowances being cut by sabotaging a royal wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Quite it's timely. It's yes. Quite timely. Time is all changed. Well, it's been a different sort of afternoon. I uh, just want to thank one or two people. Um, first of all, Jamie, <coughs> but a lot of episodes have been ready for you. And Dan and Rodden, who have been filming it, so you have a permanent record. Ruth, who raised the money and organised the whole thing and gave permission for it. And of course, John and Deborah for talking to us and entertaining us. Thank you very much. Oh, and thank you, Nigel. Thank you very much for coming to sing to us. It's a special thing to happen. It really is. Thank you, Nigel, for you're the one who set this, this all up for us and I'm, I'm delighted to say you've done it. And also to thank you for giving us a masterclass in interview techniques. I've got another thank you, which is to you as the audience. Thank you for your really excellent questions. And thank you for being attentive and respectful and for your listening skills. Thank you all. It's been very enjoyable. Thanks. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, shall we sneak a final song? Yeah. 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 Go on, sure. Come on, man. Sure. Oh, we're going to screw the cameras up. No, we're going to... Sorry, Rod. Sorry, Rod. This is a, a song that was written... <coughs> it was written for a Nelson Day... Um, radio program in 1955, which was the 150th anniversary of Trafalgar. But it's still uh, very relevant, we think. Mm, now, a bit a little higher. Come on, ye bold seamen, And always let Nelson's proud memory go wrong. And pray that the walls and the tumult may cease. For the greatest of gifts is a sweet lasting peace. May the Lord put an end to these cruel old wars and bring peace and Contentment to all our brave times. Thank you. 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 Thank you.